Welcome. We are here today to talk about some exciting new developments in the field of autism. I'm sitting here with Dr. Theo Herides. Doctor, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm a professor of pharmacology and internal medicine in Boston, and uh, we have been studying autism for a number of years now. All right, doctor, can you tell me a little bit about what autism is, how it's diagnosed? It's a very difficult problem because uh, it is actually a spectrum of different uh, presentations. Some uh, young patients uh, are very bright and very few symptoms called Asperger's. Others have very serious symptoms. We call it autistic disorder. Unfortunately, we really don't understand exactly uh, how these symptoms overlap, uh, at least until now. And can you tell me uh, a bit about the causes of autism? We have been very surprised because the prevalence or how many cases of autism we have over the years has increased tremendously uh, in such a way that uh, nothing really explains it. We don't have a real cause. Uh, many very well done studies have been published looking at what we call genetics. And um, some problems have been uncovered, but they're not enough to explain probably more than 5% of all the cases of autism. Mm -hmm. Yet, these children present, in addition to behavioral problems, inability to socialize, inability to communicate, and when they're stressed with uh, repetitive movements that are very reminiscent of other psychiatric diseases. Hmm. Doctor, how did you get involved in autism research? It's a good question. We had been studying uh, inflammation for a very long time, which is how the body responds to either real or perceived danger. And uh, we were the first to show that a certain type of immune cell called the mast cell that we otherwise know for its involvement in allergic reactions uh, was a major player in inflammation. It so happens that there is a rare disease called mastocytosis where these patients have a lot of these mast cells uh, in their body and they have all kinds of different problems. Some were very reminiscent of autism, such as for instance, they might have food intolerance, they might have skin reactions, uh, they might have what uh, patients call brain fog, they cannot concentrate. So we asked actually the members of the society how many of them had both mastocytosis and autism, and we were absolutely amazed to find out that the prevalence of autism in children with mastocytosis was one in 10 children, while the overall prevalence in the general population is one in 100 children. Uh, in fact, that is amazing because usually if you look for the existence of two disorders at the same time, you multiply the two rates, so it should have been over one in a thousand rather than one in 10. So we figured that these mast cells may have something to do with the pathogenesis of autism. Mm. I understand that you've been involved in developing a new supplement called Neuroprotec. Um, both we and um, I'm sure most of my colleagues have been frustrated because there just aren't any treatments for autism. The drugs that are mostly used are what we call psychotropic drugs that address the behavioral problems that many of these children have. And unfortunately, some recent studies have even shown that some such drugs may even be detrimental to the children rather than helping them. So we decided to see if we can address what appeared to us from our research were some of the major underpinnings of autism. For instance, there was a lot of evidence, not from us, that there's oxidative stress. That means the body is revved up and responds very differently to uh, an incoming problem uh, trigger. Uh, there was also evidence that the blood of many of these children had antibodies against their brain, which is very abnormal because technically we should not be attacking our own brain, which means that the disrupted uh, barrier allowed the immune cells to get into the brain, recognize it as foreign, and make antibodies. Uh, and lastly, many children have either food intolerance or gastrointestinal problems, as well as allergic skin-like problems, even though many times they visit either a gastroenterologist or an allergist, and the usual tests turn out to be negative, and then the families are left not knowing what to do. So we felt that we could select natural molecules that might be able to allow the body to reduce such insults and then allow the body to hopefully recover over time. Can you talk to me a little more about the active ingredients in Neuroprotec? Absolutely. 
Um, we decided to use three ingredients that belong to a class of molecules called flavonoids. Uh, there are about 3,000 of them in nature. They're found mostly in green plants and in seeds. But we studied over 100 of them, and we found out that three of them were extremely important in being antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, and also blocking the activation of these mast cells. Then we had to overcome uh, at least three obstacles. One was how to select the flavonoids so that some might work in the gut, especially for the children that have gastrointestinal problems, uh, some to work in the brain, where we think eventually the problem is brain inflammation, and some to work throughout the body to the extent that there is actually an underlying systemic, as we call it, problem. And we selected the flavonoids in such a way that we hope we address exactly those three problems. The second obstacle we had to overcome is that these flavonoids are very poorly absorbed after you take them by mouth. And that's because they just don't get dissolved in water. So we overcame the problem by actually mixing them up with olive seed oil, sometimes called olive kernel oil, because that allowed not only better absorption, but it allows the formation of microspheres, which are very easily absorbed uh, from the intestine. And just to clarify, olive seed oil is the oil that you get after you get the olive oil, and then you crush the uh, flesh and the pits. And in fact, the olive kernel oil is much richer in the good antioxidants that we all hope to get through the Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. How pure are the ingredients? I, I'm proud to say that we've gone to extremes to have them as pure as they can get. Uh, they come from a source in the United States. They're over 98% uh, pure, and their purity actually is uh, certified by an independent uh, laboratory. And I want to stress this because in most dietary supplements, if not in all of them, you cannot find out on the label either the source or the purity, which worries uh, me and my colleagues because sometimes, if not most of the time, patients have adverse effects to the inactive ingredients or the impurities and not necessarily the active ingredient uh, you want to deliver to the body. You've told us a bit about how these ingredients in the Neuroprotec affect the body. Can you talk about that a little more? Absolutely. Uh, one of the ingredients that we have, which is called rutin, is um, broken down in the intestine, and therefore it allows you to stay in the intestine and protect the disruption of the gut-blood barrier to the extent possible. The second ingredient, luteolin, is supposed to get primarily in the brain and protect the blood-brain barrier and reduce or help the body reduce brain inflammation. The third ingredient, called quercetin, is supposed to act pretty much as a decoy because all of these are broken down in the liver. So we hope that quercetin will be primarily broken down in the liver and allow actually luteolin to escape and get into the brain. Are there any publications or patents on Neuroprotec? Uh, we have a number of publications, about six of them over the just last year and a half, that deal with the subject matter and how the ingredients in Neuroprotec work, but not on Neuroprotec as such. Uh, there are also two U.S. patents and one European patent application pending that cover uh, all the ingredients, also combination of these ingredients with uh, some other molecules that might uh, hopefully include in the future. Is Neuroprotec FDA approved? Uh, it is not, but it is not because none of the dietary supplements need FDA approval. Mm -hmm. However, uh, as I indicated earlier, the ingredients are very pure. Uh, Neuroprotec is made in uh, what we call GMP, Good Manufacturing Practices, FDA certified facility. And because of that, upon request, the FDA issues a certificate of free sale uh, which indicates that the amount, the source, the purity, and the production of this product has basically their seal of approval. However, there have not been any clinical trials done on Neuroprotec as of yet. We have applied and uh, we are hoping to get actually approval from uh, a government source for a very large study with 200 children to be done at the Massachusetts General Hospital uh, next year. However, a small study that we call open label study 
meaning it's not double blind, it's not randomized, which means that we just gave the product to a few children and followed them over time, otherwise we call it anecdotal findings, have so far given us very encouraging results uh, when children between three and uh, five years old took it for about four months. Hmm. And what is your recommended dosage of the NeuroProtec? It's very hard to actually define a dosage because most of the work has been done in the laboratory, either with isolated cells or with animals. But we can make a rough approximation, and this is the approximation we made when we applied for the clinical trial, and we ended up calculating that we would need to give about two of these small soft cell capsules for about 40 pound uh, weight. So you can kind of imagine if someone is a little heavier or older, you can take four of them. But I would not recommend that anybody takes more than eight a day. And for young children, most likely it will be two to three a day. I know some children who don't like to swallow anything in pill form. What would you suggest to do for children like this? Uh, that could actually be a problem. Even though the capsules are very small, uh, nevertheless, the parents could make uh, a small pinhole squeeze the contents out in anything that the children would like to eat, such as like applesauce, for instance. Mix it up and give it to them with a teaspoon. And how long before one would expect to see results? That's also very difficult to answer because, unfortunately, animals don't get autism. Uh, we can mimic some of the symptoms, mm -hmm. but that's as far as we can go. However, when we gave it to animals where we had induced symptoms that were reminiscent of autism, it usually took the equivalent in human of about four to six months. So in the animals, it would have been a few weeks, basically. But in all honesty, we don't know. And we hope that this clinical study that will be done for six months might give us some definitive answers. However, I do not foresee, from everything I know so far, any discernible difference in symptoms before four or six months. Can NeuroProtec be taken together with other products? Uh, there's nothing that we know about NeuroProtec that should preclude you to be taken with other products. However, as families of autistic children know very well, many of the children take many different products, some prescriptions, some non-prescription. So I would certainly recommend that families uh, at least check with their health providers, uh, even though I do not suspect any uh, downside in taking with other products. But especially for children, I would certainly recommend that they double check with their uh, physicians before uh, they proceed. Mm. And what age group is most likely to benefit from NeuroProtec? That's also a very difficult question to answer. Uh, most children are diagnosed with autism around three years old. Some may be suspected a little earlier. Uh, some may, of course, show up a little uh, later. We clearly would like to have families consider giving NeuroProtec as close to the time of diagnosis as possible because that's when we think the underlying biological processes are at work, the ones that we would like to help the body fight or reduce. However, anybody can take it and our hope is that uh, patients will see benefit regardless of their age. Are there side effects? The only side effect I might expect would be a little gastrointestinal upset, primarily in uh, patients, especially young patients, that are not used to olive oil because every capsule contains uh, uh, quite a bit of, as I said earlier, olive kernel oil. Uh, some adults have tried it, uh, burped a couple of times, and if this is the case, one way to avoid it would be to just freeze the capsules and then swallow them mm -hmm. because the time it takes to go through the stomach and into the gut is just about time to allow the capsule to thaw and once it gets into the intestine, then you don't feel any uh, burping or any taste of the olive oil. But as I said earlier, uh, one uh, should make sure that they talk to the health providers because many autistic children are sensitive to anything they take. And therefore, I cannot uh, exclude that there might be some children that might not be able to tolerate it, and then obviously they'll have to stop it. What new research are you working on? Uh, this is really exciting. Uh, unfortunately, as we started saying earlier, there's no good therapy, but also there's no diagnosis of autism. 
uh, autism is diagnosed by behavioral testing, which can only be done at about three years old. Some testing can be done maybe at a year and a half, but that's mostly prognostic rather than diagnostic. So it would be wonderful if there are some markers that one can pick up in the blood. We just published a paper that a molecule that comes from nerves, possibly other cells as well, both in the brain and in the gut, is very high in autistic children around three years old. And we just submitted another paper indicating that another molecule that might be a potential marker is also very high. So I think that we're heading in the right direction to possibly have blood markers that might, if not diagnose, at least indicate the possibility that someone might have autism, in which case, along with earlier testing, families and health providers can get actually to address these children uh, much earlier on. I have to say, however, that I do not think a single biomarker will do the job, that most likely we'll have to have combination of biomarkers, uh, possibly in conjunction with whatever genes have been discovered to, unfortunately, uh, create a susceptibility of certain children to developing autism. But we really think that uh, breakthroughs will be forthcoming in the next few years. And any more you'd like to talk about on what the future looks like for the diagnosis and treatment of autism? Well, first of all, I have to really thank and, and give credit uh, to all the parents primarily uh, for being uh, absolutely well-read and uh, persistent in trying to find you know, a cure for their children. Uh, I also have to give credit to many organizations, nonprofit and others, as well as the government, because they do uh, I care and they have actually put a lot of money behind research over the last uh, few years. Uh, my gut feeling, uh, both as a, a physician and as someone who I believe cares for these children, is that uh, we should just not give up. Uh, I certainly believe that in the next few years we will have a lot more to offer uh, to these children and to the parents, and I really believe that we just have to work uh, together. But we also have to listen to patients. I think most of what I've learned or what has actually uh, directed my research in many different fields over the years is listening to patients and what they're saying. And for instance, in the particular case of autistic uh, children, the fact that they worsen by stress, the fact that they have allergic-like problems and no one understands them should not be basically disregarded. These are the kind of um, uh, symptoms that have led us to decide to work in autism and eventually develop uh, neuroprotec. And I think that such symptoms have to be uh, listened to by health professionals uh, much more than we have uh, in the past. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. It was uh, a pleasure talking to you, and I just hope our discussion uh, will be helpful to those listening. I think it will be.